What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a recap of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers losing at home to the New England Patriots and guys I really messed up. I messed up pretty bad because I had the Patriots winning yes and I had the Buccaneers covering the spread which they did but in my sports fan entertainment uh, pick'em league I forgot to put my pick in it happens to everybody I didn't think it would happen to me because I was so focused on that and it sucks man because I dropped from 37th place all the way down to 55th I believe and man I was getting up there I would have been in 30th place had I picked the, the New England Patriots they won and now I just look like a screw up because I could have had 41 points altogether now I still have only 40 so but you know, with my rankings for myself, I am 1-0 right now, both straight up and against the spread, so that sucks. I mean, you win some, you lose some. Everybody always forgets their, you know, their picks sometimes. Sometimes, you know, they, they miss a pick or two. Um, it's a good thing I only missed this Thursday night game instead of missing a whole Sunday, a Sunday game because otherwise it wouldn't be worth it of even trying to win because you're not winning if you miss a whole week of picks. So let's get right on to the game. This was a pretty defense ran, ran game. No, not much offense really going on. But I mean, this was a sloppy game. This is one of the most sloppiest games I've watched this season. You know, both quarterbacks threw for for over 300 uh, yards, but none of them could really get in the end zone because of stupid mistakes, penalties, dropped passes. I have never seen more dropped passes in the first half of a game in my entire life than what I saw tonight. It was really bad sloppy football from both offenses. Um, the quarterbacks were doing just fine distributing the ball and the receivers couldn't make the catch. Um, there were a couple times Cameron Brait dropped a touchdown late in the game. Doug Martin dropped a few passes. Uh, I, th I don't know if Mike Evans dropped a few passes but he, he usually does. And yeah, just a lot of guys from that Tampa Bay offense dropped passes. And then you look on the New England side of things, a lot of re uh, receivers dropped. Deion Lewis dropped a couple passes, uh, four first downs. There were third down plays, and those could have been for first downs. Dropped those passes. And yeah, there's just a lot of sloppy football. Tom Brady throws an interception on the first drive of the game. Just boneheaded play overthrows the ball and Justin Evans the rookie out of Texas A&M it was able to get his first interception and it was on the GOAT and Tom Brady so a very sloppy game from both teams these two defenses aren't very good but they look as Steve Smith said in the post game review they both look like the steel curtain out there um, and it's true I mean they looked good the defense looked good you know Kendall Beckwith the rookie for Tampa Bay who was starting at middle linebacker in place of Quan Alexander who was injured. He had a total of 14 tackles in total. So you look at that, that's, you know, pretty, that's a lot of tackles, man. That's a lot of tackles. But I mean, I guess you could say he played a good game. He did get beat a lot of times. A lot of times he was matched up on some wide receivers. Like I saw him matched up on Chris Hogan a couple times. He got dotted up, and then he was matched up on uh, Danny Amendola a couple times. He was dotted up. So, I mean, they didn't play that very well. And the stats will tell you that they did. You know, Justin Evans, the rookie, had nine total tackles and an interception and two pass defense. Uh, Kendall Beckwith, like I just said, 14 tackles in total. So, um, and then I don't understand here because... You t you guys tell me, is the total tackles on ESPN.com, because I know a lot of different websites tell you differently. Uh, total tackles, it says t uh, total tackles 14 and then solo 12. So that means there was only, he didn't have too many tackles, right? That means he only had 14 tackles, 2 solo, 2 assists. So 12 plus 2 equals 14. Because some, some things do it, do it way differently, but I'm just going to say he had 14 total tackles. That's all I'm going to say. So... Moving on, because I know I think NFL.com does something different, but I go off of ESPN because it shows you more stats and more stuff in the box score. So let's, uh, yeah, start off in the game. Tom Brady starts off, he throws an interception, uh, but thankfully T Tampa Bay does not um, get any points out of that. And Tom Brady and his offense move down the field again, and they get a three 
point lead early in the game and then Tampa Bay comes down and uh, scores for Doug Martin he sc initially scored on a longer touchdown run but Doug Martin's touchdown got pulled back because he, his knee was down right before he reached the goal line and there seems to be a lot of touchdowns like that this year uh, you're talking about Golden Tate uh, as one of them that could have been the game winner right there and a lot of touchdowns like that happened so far this year you're talking about Sterling Shepard also where he just barely um you know, had the ball out of bounds before reaching the end zone, and a lot of a lot of uh, scores like that, a lot of plays like that so far in this season. But he later on scored on the next play, actually, and they go up seven to three. And the Tampa Bay offense um, look good right now. But Nick Folk, I mean, this guy is not going to have a job tomorrow. I can surely guarantee you guys, he will not be the kicker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers tomorrow morning. They're going to sign a kicker from a practice squad. They're going to sign a kicker somewhere. They've got connections. I'm sure they started looking uh, last last week against the Giants where he missed two field goals and the PAT but was able to get the game winner. But still, in this game, you leave nine points on the board. That's a whole nine points. If you add those nine points up, and, and this is just a speculation because the game could have not went out like this. I mean, uh, should they get that nine points New England could probably get a touchdown because they needed it, but just, you know, they could have gotten nine points out of that, okay? That's 23 points altogether. You need that. You need 23 points. That's the type, you know, it's that kind of league right now, you know, very close. That's That proves that you need a kicker in the NFL. A lot of people don't care about having kickers. Um, you know, when Pittsburgh started having their trouble with kickers about two years ago, then everybody was like, wow. Look what a team is without their kicker. They can't win close games, and that's what it comes down to. You need a kicker, and Nick Folk wasn't there for them. Could have won them the game had they um, had they had a better kicker, but that's all speculation. Um, so, yeah, they leave nine points on the board. One of them, I believe, was a 52-yarder, so it's missable. But another one was a 31-yard chip shot in which he uh, it didn't look like it was going in right from where he kicked it. I mean... As soon as he kicked it, you knew that that was going anywhere. It was wobbling. It wasn't end over end like it should be. And it was just a bad kick. And just Nick Folk isn't going to have a job tomorrow. Guarantee you that. Feel bad for the guy, but it is what it is. And then uh, then field, a bunch of field goals happened. Steven Goskowski, he was 4-4. Four for four And total opposite from Nick Folk's 0-3. Uh, for three. So uh, on to that. And then late in the game... Almost to you know tie it up. I mean not tie it up to gain the lead, hoping to gain the lead. Cameron Bray scores a touchdown late in the game. He makes up for that dropped touchdown that he had. It looked like Devin McCourty hit it out, but he dropped it. So um, he makes up for that. They go up 16 to 14, and you know they get they try to onside kick it, but Nick Folk. He's not able to kick a 31-yard field goal. You think he's going to get an onside kick, a successful onside kick? No way. That thing didn't even travel five yards before it was hit. And it was hit in favor of New England. It was bounced in favor of New England. It bounced off of some guys from New England. And they caught it like past the 50-yard line. And then add an offsides penalty. They were already at like the 35-yard line. They didn't have anything to worry about. They knew they clinched that game. Then late in the game, they try to come back. And uh, unfortunately, can't do that. Jameis Winston didn't have time in the pocket too much. Uh, they get to towards the red zone, but it was knocked away as time expired, and that was the game. Oh, uh, another big problem for Jameis Winston. Before I get onto the stats, another big problem for Jameis Jameis Winston. He is not able to hook up with Deshaun Jackson. And I've been watching NFL Network, and what they say is true. He's never had a deep threat ever. And I even think I'm even thinking that from. Uh, all the way back at FSU. I mean, I think he had Travis Rudolph at the time, and he had Rashad Green, but where they really deep thrust like a Deshaun Jackson is a blazing speed uh, burner like Deshaun Jackson who completely burns it out the field as soon as the ball is snapped. I don't think he's ever had that type of receiver, and he's still a young quarterback. And on top of that, a young quarterback with some accuracy issues. We all know this with Jameis Winston. He does have some accuracy issues. So he's having trouble connecting with Deshaun Jackson. And you, sh and you saw the frustration with Deshaun Jackson, and that's why I have him as my at least you tried award winner. As you guys know, I give that to the, uh, the best player on the losing team, the at least you tried award. So, 
that's definitely a problem for Jameis Winston. They hooked up a little bit um, in this game, but that was on. It wasn't on any streak passes. One was on a crossing route. The other was on a um, a comeback route. So. It really wasn't anything too big, but he did have over 100 yards, so good job by Deshaun Jackson. He could have had a lot more because he was open on a lot of plays. Jameis Winston missed him on. So uh, let's start off with the quarterbacks. You had Tom Brady, who was 30 for 40. A great day for Tom Brady. 303 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. That interception was a boneheaded interception. On top of that, it was Tom Brady's first interception of the season. So... Boneheaded throw by Tom Brady. Didn't have a great game moving the ball, too. He only had 10 incompletions, but some of those incompletions were pretty questionable. Um, but nonetheless, he still had a great day. And I feel like he could, he could have had a better day against that uh, Tampa Bay defense. I don't know how Tampa Bay got a pass rush, but they did. They were able to pressure Tom Brady. Uh, on, but on the times that they blitzed, and we all know this, if you have terrible linebackers, literally all those linebackers are garbage. All three starting their linebackers are complete garbage. You got Glanton uh, playing strong. You got on the middle, you've got that rookie Kendall Beckwith who looked uh, statistically looked good, but really didn't look good. And then you got another guy, which I don't even know his name, So at uh, playing the weak side linebacker. So they're trash. So they tried blitzing, and Tom Brady just kept dotting them up. Um, they tried taking a chance there. Whoa, my computer just went all the way down the screen. So, uh, moving on to Jameis Winston. He had 334 yards and one touchdown. No interceptions. So, the second week in a row where Jameis Winston has no interceptions. Coming off that three-interception game from the Minnesota Vikings. In which he looked terrible that game. But it is the Minnesota uh, Vikings defense. And he was sacked a total of two times for 15 yards. And by the way, Tom Brady was sacked three times for a total of 14 yards. And uh, this is the fourth time in a row, actually the fifth time in a row, I believe. Uh, I believe all games, New England has allowed a 300-yard passer every single game this season. That is terrible. That is really, really bad. And, I mean, this is on pace to be the worst defense in NFL history. So, you already know they're 32nd in the league in passing defense. It, it is what it is. And I can't believe that is even a thought. I can't believe that's, that's a thing. Because Stephon, you got a guy like Stephon Gilmore out there, Malcolm Butler, Devin McCourty, Patrick Chung. You got a lot of guys out there. Just, those starting guys right there are complete beasts. So, I don't know how they're not getting it together. We move on to the New England rushing. We've got Deion Lewis leading the way for the New England Patriots with seven rushes for 53 yards, 7.6 yards average. On top of that, he you know he had that great 30 31 yard run, and he also had a couple runs that went for you know uh, um, a loss. So he could have had a higher uh, yards per carry than 7.6, and 7.6 is great. Let me tell you. So and then uh, Mike Gillisley. Uh, the bruising back for the New England Patriots had 12 rushes for 52 yards, a 4.3 yard average, and we get it. They're going to run on this defense. Uh, the New England ran pretty well on this defense. They're an okay running team, uh, but we knew from last week with the Giants, they ran pretty well on the Tampa Bay defense because, like I said, Tampa Bay, once you get past that front four, which is a decent front four, Chris Baker, um, uh, and Chris Baker... Jerome, uh, Gerald McCoy and Robert Ayers and William Golston. That's not a bad front four, but once you get past that front four as a running back, you've got those those linebackers who aren't very good, and you're going to get some yards off of that. Should you have Quan Alexander there and Levante David, it would be a different story, but they had a day running the football. So um, as a team, they ran for 4.9 yards a carry, so pretty good. Uh, Doug Martin uh, going on to Tampa Bay. Doug Martin, 13 carries, 74 yards, 5.7 yards per carry, and a touchdown. So a very good day back after coming from a uh, four-game suspension. And first, good first game back for Doug Martin, the muscle hamster. He hates using, uh, being that name, but you got to embrace that name. Embrace the name. He looks like a hamster, too. Anyway. Uh, Jameis Winston was the second leading rusher, three rushes for 11 yards. That is a problem. You have to run more guys out there. You have Jaquiz Rogers. You only use him three times. He only got two yards. Use him more. He's definitely a good asset. Charles Sims didn't have a very good day. He dropped some passes as well. 
uh, in the passing game, but he only had one rush for three yards. I feel like Tampa Bay really messed up here. They got anxious. They started throwing the ball a lot. I mean, Jameis Winston was 26 of 46, guys. 26 of 46. He, he missed a lot of throws because they got very anxious. They were trying to get up there and take the lead, and they weren't very patient with it, and you could see that right there. Dougie Doug was the uh, leading rusher, only had 13 carries. So... That's a problem for Tampa Bay. They messed up in not running the ball because they were pretty successful with Doug Martin. Moving on to the receiving game. You got um, most of this game, I believe, on like into the mid-third quarter. Tom Brady only threw for four receivers. And that was Chris Hogan, Danny Amendola, uh, I believe James White, and Brandon Cooks. Those four guys only. And um, then he started, uh, you know, getting the ball out more. I think only to Deion Lewis. Okay, so he only threw to five guys this whole game, as opposed to um, Jameis Winston throwing to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys. Um, he was pretty efficient. Tom Brady knew what he saw. He he knew it was working. He knew Chris Hogan was beating the linebackers in the slot. He knew Brandon Cooks was also doing the same, so he stuck. He stuck with that. No need to spread the ball out if uh, your receivers are always getting open. So, uh, leading the way for the New England Patriots, you have Brandon Cooks, five receptions, 85 yards, and a 34-yard uh, longest catch. He caught five out of eight. So, uh, pretty good targets to receptions. Dan uh, Danny Amendola, 8 for 8 on targets and receptions. That's what I like to see. 8 for 8, 77 yards. Chris Hogan, 8 for 11, 74 yards. James White, 7 for 9, 57 yards. So, a good passing attack from the New England Patriots. Uh, a lot of receptions compared to the targets and very efficient there. Deshaun Jackson really could have had a very good game. He was 5 out of 9. All those throws were not his fault. They were Jameis Winston's fault. Uh, and he had 106 yards on just 5 receptions. Think about if he caught all those receptions, he could have had a lot more yards there. Cameron Bray looked very good, but he dropped a couple passes. He was 5 for 9, 68 yards. Adam Humphreys, and let's talk about Adam Humphrey for a second because... Last week, we saw Adam Humphreys break a million gazillion tackles against the New York Giants, and I thought maybe that was just a problem with the Giants not able to wrap up and tackle. DRC thought he was, I don't know, Mike Singletary and tried hitting somebody really hard, and, you know, Adam Humphreys just bounced off of it, ran for 15 yards. But in this game, he got hit by Stephon Gilmore, who really laid it out to him. You could hear it from the TV screen, really laid out. Adam Humphreys bounced right off the tackle and again ran for another 15 yards. So you got to be careful with Adam Humphreys. These guys in the in the fill rooms, whoever plays, uh, whoever Tampa plays next week, how, I'll look it up in a, in a second. Whoever plays Tampa next week needs to make sure they wrap up Adam Humphreys because he could be a killer for you guys uh, for Tampa Bay. He had three receptions for 51 yards on five targets. Mike Evans, pretty silent this game. You really haven't heard of Mike Evans besides... You know, when they were trying to move down the field late in the game, that's when he really made some kind of impact where he had that 15-yard pass. I, I believe it was 15 yards. He was five receptions out of eight targets, 49 yards, really didn't do much. Charles Sims, five for 31, and no, nothing really uh, is important here. O.J. Howard, they don't use O.J. Howard. You guys let me know, is O.J. Howard not doing what he has to do in uh, practice right now? Because the guy's a complete monster, and they're not using him. I mean, he had a great... Uh, touchdown uh, last week, and that was pretty much the only time he was really used the whole season. So I don't know what's going on there. Cameron Bray is not a bad uh, not a bad tight end. Don't get me wrong, but you can put two tight end sets out there. I don't know why Tampa Bay doesn't do that. Uh, and Chris Chris Godwin too. I I really was excited to see Chris Godwin this year with Tampa Bay, the rookie second round pick out of Penn State at wide receiver. I wanted to see what he can do. He only had one reception for eight yards on two targets. So, and he was not on the field too much. So, um, yeah. Then moving uh, down the, moving down to the defensive stats. Devin McCourty, eleven for eleven. He allowed some catches today, but he did find tackling. And I believe he was the one to bat down. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe he was the one to bat down the pass at the end of the game. So good on him. 
Uh, but nothing really else special from anybody else. Kyle Vinoy had a half sack. Trey Flowers had a half sack. Dietrich Wise, the rookie, has another sack. I believe he's already had four sacks this season, so not bad from Dietrich Wise. The only productive rookie draft pick from New England. Adrius Glanton, the strong side linebacker, had a sack for Tampa Bay, which is very rare because um, that the linebackers suck. So, and then whoever, uh, Gerald McCoy had himself a sack, and Clinton McDonald, who I think is the other, is, it was the strong side linebacker. So, not bad from your linebackers. So, um, you know, you got to hope that I, I, I'm going to look up who Tampa Bay plays next. So, hold on. All right, so next week, Tampa Bay faces off against uh, the at the Atlanta, um, the Arizona Cardinals at Arizona. So that can be a good game. We'll see how Tampa Bay does on the road, and we'll see if the Arizona Cardinals can defend home field. Um, but then moving on to the New England Patriots, they go against the Jets at the Jets. I think this would be a pretty easy game for them to win. Uh, we have to be careful, though, with that running attack from the Jets. I think you guys will be uh, winning that game anyway, so not to worry about that. It's not like they have a good team to compete. I know they're probably your biggest rival in the division right now, but they're not going to compete. Um, so looking good right now from both teams. I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans should be pretty disappointed with this loss, but that's still hopeful because they played a very good game against a very good defense. They're banged up on defense right uh, against a very good offense with Tom Brady at the helm. And you got a very banged up defense right now. You're missing all your linebackers. And your front forward it doesn't look too good. And your uh, secondary doesn't play too well. So, I mean, should you figure something out in the secondary? Because all the starters are there. They just suck. So figure something out in the secondary. Get your linebackers back and healthy. Get make sure Gerald McCoy is back at 100% because he's not 100%. He had a sack and he's and he's playing uh, injured right now. So make sure he gets back healthy and you could win that Arizona game against the Cardinals because they're not looking too good right now. And then the Patriots, um, you know, you should be a little worried about this loss. Is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? They're a rising team, yes, but a team of your caliber should not look the way they looked against the Tampa Bay defense right now. So, uh, on top of that, you're off uh, your your defense, you should be very ashamed of. So, um yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Tampa Bay basically was robbed this game at home where the New England Patriots take this one 19 to 14. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next video.